now. Yeah, What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sub Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Lou Trevisi. This is episode 113. We're in the triple digits, baby. We've been here for a minute, but we're we're here for a long time, I guess. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, to my left, we got Chris Cheney, always judging me on my hosting skills. And then uh, <laughs> below me, we got Lawrence Deloach. Everybody's here, baby. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, podcast. guys. It's a team podcast. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Before we get started with anything, I have made some uh, rash uh, decisions with my money. I bought a pair of uh, draft lottery Patrick Ewings. I bought a pair of those. I bought three APC shirts. I bought uh, a fucking tenant shirt. I'm I'm going crazy, guys. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I'm going wild. Um, taking, advantage, taking advantage of them Donald, them Donald dollars. and uh, <laughs> Yeah, dude. And the um, fucking extra. Yeah. After the soaps I bought, mm-hmm. I've pulled back on um, less thoughtful purchases because that was a uh, spur of the moment purchase. Um, I've been trying to put back into my friend's brand. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, Claw Money, I bought something from a while ago. I think I mentioned that. Uh, but my boy, Tony Hooligan, who I think we had on – yeah, we had on here for a second way back because he got, a, like, a StockX article written about him. But he's doing his thing. I bought some of his clothes. Um, just shit like that. Just anytime my friend's got a brand – like, Frank the Butcher, I bought a shirt from him. Um, mm-hmm. Well, actually, I tried to, and then he said he's just going to give it to me. But I, I tried. But uh, tried. just shit like that. Yeah, just hitting friends up, being like, what do you got? Let me get an XL. Mm-hmm. That type of Weird thing. flex, but okay. Weird little <laughs> – oh, I'm going to – I'm friends with Frank the Butcher. Look at me. All right, we got it. <laughs> That's big bro. Al, you, uh, you make any purchases? I thought you were going to be a do-rag guy now. Uh, I was. Uh, <laughs> I, I still am, but uh, I. What did I? I only thing I. I mean, I bought. Uh, I bought a John Elliott hoodie for yeah, it was like seventy percent. was like seventy percent off. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm like I'm like it's spring sale season, so it's mm-hmm. kind of like I'm just like I'm just like pulling the trigger on, it, and then if I like it, I keep it. If I don't, it goes back. But um, yeah, it it was uh. It's a really nice uh, wool blend hoodie. It's uh, and and it was really good. Uh, but like I said, like we got like a lot of uh, online vendors right now. They're doing they're in sale season. Since yeah, uh, Nordstrom, Saks, uh, they all they're all reducing. So if you're an internet hawker, which we all are right now, and given where we're at, uh, take advantage. Take advantage. Yeah. Take advantage. That's in the worst case scenario, if you don't like it. Return it, but but if there's only one left in your size, you better get that shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah man. man. All right, where do you want to go? Where do you guys want to start today? Because we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah, we uh, maybe do. maybe uh, should we start with doc stuff and then go from there, or never never question it, just lead into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. let's let's just go over the doc because I mean, like that's been our thing. Yeah. Um, like always like right before we were doing it like what are the thoughts going in um last week was way better than way better than i expected i'm gonna be real um they somehow avoided all the major things that we wanted answers to but they definitely uh nicked at some of the questions that we all had i feel like as far as the gambling the dad stuff but what are your guys thoughts initially i mean it made me feel like a real piece of shit uh because of the they were like oh all these conspiracy theories about his dad. It's awful. This man just lost his father and all this shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. There's like a guy behind it. You know, I'm an asshole. Right. Felt like a real dick. Because it was um, real sad. I mean, I, I just felt like, you know, obviously there was certain parts, especially like I, I believe the end of episode seven, where he basically like cried and, you know, was kind of like, you know, I did all this, you know, because, you know, nothing was given. And, you know, I, if you don't like it, then, you know, I, I felt like that's, that's who you really see who Michael Jordan was on the basketball court. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of young, a lot of people who are in there, you know, they're any, if you're like 30 and up, you do have some memory of Michael Jordan playing basketball. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the younger generation, obviously they're all they, you know, they see, they saw Kobe, they saw LeBron. So it was kind of easy for them to say, oh man, you know, these are LeBron's, you know, the GOAT. But it's like anyone who watched Jordan in the 90s or 80s, 
n- knew how great this fucking guy was. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's just him being great and then him like being right place, right time for everything. From Nike uh, needing a, a guy, a guy who can sell shoes, him being a guard and a great guard, uh, you know, from him winning a national championship, like it all like built this this story and this person to see who we who you know who he is today. So I, I just you know I, I really enjoyed it, obviously, and, and you know I know that was like kind of long winded, but I definitely enjoyed it, and I you know I'm, I'm really excited for these final two episodes, which is it's really sad because you know we 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 fought people fought for the documentary to be bumped up, and now we got it bumped up. And, it's about it's to over. be over. It's about to yeah. be over, yeah. Over. This was easily the best part of this whole quarantine thing, and it, re- it reminded me of how I used to kind of live as a kid. Like, mm-hmm. not much to do. Like, definitely summer vacation vibe where it's like, I ain't got shit to do really. Uh, not that I could really go anywhere, but back then I had nowhere to go because where was I going? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then down to like, yeah, just like, because after this, we're done. I'm going to go up because they play the old ones. I'm going to throw it on. I'll be like making food or whatever. But like, it, it, it's reminiscent of like those days where Jordan was kind of playing. So it's a mm-hmm. weird vibe to have during this whole thing. Um, yeah. I, uh, after watching those last two episodes, kind of hate every rap line that talks about Jordan coming back with the 45 after mm-hmm. realizing how quickly he abandoned it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, he didn't even go a full season where 45. Literally, one guy was like, you're not 23, Jordan, though, and then he put it back on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you know really? how many lines there are in rap about coming back with the 4-5? Right. Mm-hmm. Now, there's different ways to take that, but I'm kind of like, yeah, but this is – he abandoned it immediately. This is a horror – this is not a good line anymore. There's, like, so many songs to me. Yeah. Is there any other, like, cultural references that you guys thought of after the you watched the doc on, like – Oh shit! Like, cause rap lines were running through my head crazy, and a lot of mm-hmm. those meant more to like, or not meant more, but like they meant more in the s- scheme of the song. But then other ones, I was like, oh, that's a terrible line now. I used to quote that all the time. Or was uh, that just me? I think that's just you, man. Cause the whole time right. I was awesome. thinking episode eight, <laughs> episode eight, the whole time I was watching it, there's that one scene where the trainer starts to like tear up because Jordan was like, hey, I he wanted to give his best. And I was like, what a cornball. <laughs> Is it, did that not hit anybody else? That this guy was just sitting there talking about another grown man and crying? That's what the whole doc is. What are you talking about? That's also, yeah, it's also true. Fine. Fair. Fair. But it's like his dedication to, to working out, it just brought this man to tears. I mean, yeah, he was his trainer. That, that guy made his whole, that guy paid for his house. Yeah, that's true. So I kind of get it. L, was there anything I, that was hitting you like after? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, no, no! I mean the uh, the Space Jam, how they uh, how he was like, I need a gym built, and they were like, Yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah. We'll build a gym for you. Yeah, that <laughs> right shit was now. great. That, that shit was, was great. And yeah. uh, and also, what was interesting was how uh, you know he he bought in the guy the the best players in the league, you know, to, to run pickup games. And how he felt like that gave him a competitive advantage over like guys like Reggie Miller. And I guess obviously, you, you know, you there. Everyone's looking at it as just run, but Mike's looking at it as how can I scout these guys to see what their tendencies are on the basketball court. And um, that that right there to me is it's it's phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Um, I'm trying to think what I mean. Obviously, I'm trying to think uh, the Scott Burrell stuff where he was you know yes. he was pushing Scott Burrell in practice, mm-hmm. and uh, you know those type of things. Just you know. It's, it's uh, it was it was really like I said it's one of the 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 best docs I think we're going we've seen in in a long time long time that yeah very long time so I mean um, even um, even like the 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 White Sox shit right yeah because I remember I remember doing book reports on Michael Jordan as a Red Sox or uh, not a Red Sox a White Sox excuse me. White Sox um mm-hmm. but then I forgot about the lockout part. Mm-hmm. You know what That's I mean? Like, overlooked I, part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, a whole wave of nostalgia, bro, hit me. I was like, oh, he didn't, like, quit. He, like, couldn't play. Yeah, he chose not to play. Yeah, he was like, yo, I'm not doing that shit. And then he went back to basketball. I forgot all of that, dude. And that is such a crucial point in his fucking, uh, like, lore. Yeah. His, like, his whole story. 
Yeah. Because they make it seem like the dead dad shit, or I'm going to get out of basketball, let me run away. Like, he didn't run away. Mm -hmm. He chose. And then, like, he didn't run away from baseball. He had to leave because he, he had to play something. You know, he's the guy's an athlete. Right. So the the strikes the strike in baseball uh, began on August twelfth, nineteen ninety four. So that was like you know obviously in the mid, the beginning of when he was, you know, kind of you know in in, uh, in the minor leagues, and it did not end until April second, nineteen ninety five, which he made the announcement he was coming back to the NBA seventeen days later. So, you know, I'm sure you know there was the whole, and in, in between a, a strike, he's just playing basketball. You know, he's working yeah. out with the Bulls. He's doing so. You know, I don't know. It's uh, I'm sorry, March. He, I'm sorry, he returned. He returned to the Bulls in March of '95. Uh, so, mm. you know, I, I just feel like you know, it, definitely that that baseball seat. If, if there wasn't a baseball strike, <clears throat> I think he uh, he definitely at some point gets to the major leagues. Yeah, yeah even sure. even Easily. even if it wasn't even if he wasn't you know I'm not gonna say deserving of him, but he's Mike fucking George. He was going to get a shot in the major leagues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. So, what do you guys I, really... Oh, well, real quick. I'm what? like, do you, No, no, no. Do, go, go, go. Gonna, do you think there's going to be some type of uh, shock drop tonight, Ed, uh, since tonight is the last couple episodes? Oh. I do think um, either tomorrow at some point, or yeah, like tonight, kind of like they did with the Fire Reds. Yeah, I think there's going to be something, because with this being the last one, this is sort of the last... There'll be like a like a delayed spike, I feel like, because like the, mm. the people who couldn't get to see the doc on time or whatever, they'll get it eventually. But like, yeah, I feel like this next week there's gonna be a spike in a lot of the shit because it's the final week as far as like the resale. And mm -hmm. then yeah, I feel like they have to capitalize on the last week of this happening. Well, last week we got a Soulfly. They did a uh, they did a shock drop of the Soulfly Jordan Tens. Yes. Uh, and they came out at the beginning of they came out at nine o'clock when Eastern time when the when the doc began. So uh, we're looking, I mean, you know, obviously, if we do get a shock drop, what will it be? Uh, I mean, they, who knows? Food games? You want to you say food games? I mean, you, you never know what Nike is, has up their sleeves. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like we said on the, the previous podcast, uh, I mean, shit is going up. Yes, something's happening. I mean, no, when I say shit is going up, I mean – shit that you know jordans are are fucking increasing you know their prices we're in a we're in a fucking pandemic we're yeah. in a recession and That's people insane. are still like i'm about to spend you know fifteen hundred dollars on a pair of jordan ones right now because that's where we're at that's where we're at um speaking of uh jordans uh do we have any uh we have any releases coming up soon we have the Flint 13s coming out, right? In a right. Weeks, yeah, the so. Flint, I, I feel like the last of the delayed stuff from that initial COVID delay are finally going to trickle out. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Nothing exciting to me, though. The Flints are cool. I mean, there's been all this dunk hype. I feel like a lot of the focus has been there. Mm -hmm. um, but we got, we, we got the Metallic pack coming out, right? I yeah. believe. Yeah, uh, that's true. Days. Yeah, so, well, I mean, that. Purples are coming out? I don't know where, when the rest of them are coming out. Is it all of it? Or is it just the purples? I'm seeing purples on sneakers. I think the purples, uh -huh. and then um, I think the metallic green fours, right? Or the all-white ones with the metallic green, those are coming out. Mm -hmm. The red ones are coming out, I believe, on the 20th. And then the orange ones, I think they're all coming out on, on May 20th. Oh, interesting. And none of those really are particularly uh, eye-grabbing to me. Um, I'm really hoping something I like comes out soon while I, I'm getting this extra, you know, fucking Trump money. No, I think but, the green ones are are the best. I mean, I like the green ones a lot. Of uh, it's like green a green ones are good. It's like a like a f more f like a flex of a Stan Smith kind of. Yeah. Right. Like it's got some of that same vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. I mean, we discuss them generally. Like if if you got a, if you like fours, especially a white four, and you got it's one of your colors, like grab them. But like none of these really. I do. I kind of like that that women's Jordan, and it's coming out in the UNC, or I think it might have came out already. Um, but there was that Jordan's, uh, like it looks. It has the sole of uh, the thirteen, I think, and it's got like the thirteen esque uh, like dot pattern or whatever that texture. You guys know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. I don't really remember. Melody Asani's, um, not the Melody Asani's, right? 
not talking Wait, about no. Women, Jordan, UNC. Let me see if it comes up, and I'll share the screen. Yeah, yeah, these guys. Hold on. Let me share the fucking screen. Share that screen. Yeah, these ones. I oh, like these, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. They're just a – I don't know if I could wear them. You could probably wear them. They, they remind me a lot of your Reeboks. Is that why I like them? Is because yeah. they got, like, 90s Reebok vibe? Yeah. Damn. I, that's what I feel when I first okay. saw them. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have to get, like, a 10 and a half or an 11, which I could get. But, like, I like these. These are nice. Yeah. But that's the yeah, only no. thing that's really exciting to me. Yeah, the Melody Asani joints uh, with the, well, the, those were those were the the black and red ones with the cherry on it. But uh, yes. yeah, it's definitely. But yeah, that's it. What about you guys? Was there anything out of those that you wanted to get? Mm, not really. No, I, you know, I, I'm I'm like kind of like taking a little stand against Jordan right now. I mean, I I don't want any of the fours. Uh, the the Flint 13s, I've already, I've had like three pairs of them throughout the, the iteration uh, when they were out and shit, and I, I'm not going to get another one. So um, I think I'm just going to kind of just chill. I didn't go for the Fire Red Fives. Um, I'm not sure what the next thing that's going to draw me and possibly the, the Fire Red Fours, uh, Black Friday. But uh, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's obviously we got a long way to go and, you know, who knows? Yeah. Um, we do have uh, this is a a big week, obviously, uh, for uh, dunks as well. I mean, I feel like every week now we're we're fucking talking about a pair of dunks that you know the masses are going to go for. Uh, and obviously this week it is the uh, the Nike SB uh, Chunky Dunky Ben and Jerry's collab. Yes. Uh, I thought if I'm correct, I remember Chris has been on the fence about those. Yeah. Were you on the fence? Yeah, Chris was on when he first saw those. I actually liked them. Um, I have decided that I hate them. You hate them because of the price and the hype, or do you hate them because of the design? Uh, I hate them because uh, – now, I said before, I think I stood firm on conceptually. I love the idea. Mm -hmm. um, the execution uh, – makes little sense to me as far as the story and then yeah the price annoys me like why do you guys like this i mean how does the story not make sense look at the shoe it looks like a pint of ben and jerry's mm -hmm. no it does not it looks like a weird like messed up cow that has no. like a like what no it depends. Bro, are you, please are you serious bro yes. that's the f fuck it look up a, a pint of ben and jerry's they all no look no the no i no i understand i understand it's just it's it's not cohesive enough i hate that word and i hate that i used it but mm -hmm. the shoe itself isn't cohesive to me as far as the execution that, and that's just me okay i like the idea though and i'm not saying don't like the shoe i'm just kind of confused on why so many people like it and why it's selling right now the last sale is uh 1840 yeah that i mean of course that sounds like a lot that seems like too much like way too much for these in my opinion you know what it is i think what annoys me is that there's nothing with cow print that sells for that high hmm cow that print's like, like a trashy print the, okay that's fair yeah the cow print is like is a big big deterrent for sure am i am i crazy to think that though no i don't i, I, don't th I think that's fair I think from a from a from an SB standpoint, they are out there. They're wild, and I think that's what we have come to love from that division of Nike. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I what what also happens what sucks is it is being released at uh, the height of of um, hype beast uh, young kids wanting. SBs, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And I, right. I just was having a discussion with a friend of mine who I remember we, you know, we, um, we, we talk about being like old dudes, you know, quote unquote old dudes loving, uh, still loving sneakers. And, and I remember I said, I, dude, I remember getting my uncle dunked for $130 in college that I still have to this day. Or like Tiffany's that like had the, this like bigger hype than these Ben and Jerry's, the yeah. OG Tiffany's. And I paid two hundred dollars for them back in two thousand and five. Like it's like, but we're we're at the the stage of hype 
where the hype is going to now push the SB instead of it being two hundred dollars, it's going to be twelve hundred. Yeah, and 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 that that really sucks. I think they're like I said, I think they're a beautiful sneaker. I mean, it just it, it just um, it's just going to be interesting how this week plays out. Um, but I I do see a lot of people with early pairs, um, but a lot of those early pairs it seems like everyone's getting them without a box, so that's going to cause a lot of people are saying that skate shops are backdooring the people because they're selling them to the customer without the box, so now yeah. all they have to do is scan them. We don't, you know, that's going to be a little interesting. Um, but I mean, hype is hype. It's Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's uh, they're doing a contest where if you send them a picture or draw a picture. Which, Chris, I think, you know, that'd be dope for you of, uh, you know, people doing, like, uh, skate tricks, I believe. You know, you, you can win a pair of uh, Ben & Jerry's. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, use your skills for good. <laughs> for once. I, I only use them for evil. <laughs> yeah, you only use them to make weird Sonic shoes that never get made. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just random leanings. Yeah, maybe I'll yeah. do that. I didn't. I didn't see that contest. L, if you send me a link after the, we start recording, I, I, maybe I'll sure, swing yeah, on yeah. in. Yo, because yeah. uh, Raph and Rome gave me a bunch of shit for not doing that best New York tea, even though I'm not from New York. So I, maybe I should do something. I gotta enter a contest. I gotta win something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. win some shit. Get get our name out there. Start building some hype around us, bro. Submit it as the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll share it. We'll take turns. It'll hold, like, we'll keep it in each of our our places. We won't wear them. Just have them <laughs> in the we, we just switch one. I have the left, you have the right, and then Lawrence yeah. has the laces. Right, exactly. And then we just uh-huh. rotate, and there we go. It's, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I'm about, baby. Um, but staying but, on shoes and new releases and our potential releases or whatever, however you want to frame this, um, Fujiwara uh, has shown us, you guys want to go, go down this route? Uh, he showed us this Air Jordan 3, this Fragment 3. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's talk um, about it. Yeah, so going back to an interview, I believe it was at ComplexCon that he did with Jeff Staple uh, in like 17. Um, he showed a bunch of unreleased uh, Fragment samples that were supposed to be a part of his 10, his the 10. Mm-hmm. Um, which during that interview with Jeff, he sort of admits and concedes that Virgil like won. Because I guess these are from samples around the same time, but they only released Virgil's. But yeah. these these Air Max, uh, like ACG looking shoes that he did uh, have come up recently again. Mm-hmm. And then these threes came out where he's sh- showing images of them. And then th- there's all the ones he showed in that interview, which was like an Air Force. There was two Air Force ones a Cortez, and then I think uh, there was maybe like two other ones including Yeah, there was a Presto, a Cortez, the Air Force Ones he was wearing. Yes. Which were very nice. No, Air Force Ones. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 okay. The Air Force One Highs. Yeah. With like the Velcro. I like those a lot, because I just liked his passion behind them a lot. You yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I don't know. I don't have anything right oh, now. Oh, yeah, no, just because oh. like, yeah, no, Orange, you can go. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, I, I think uh, this is not the first uh, Fragment 3 sample that we've seen uh, right. on, on Hiroshi. We did see a white and uh, black uh, and royal blue pair as well a couple of years or last year or something like that. But um, this pair is very interesting to me. It's because uh, it's, it's like very like monotonish, you know, it's like dull, not dull colors, but it's not vibrant. It's, you know, it's, the materials used on it obviously are our standard with her, what Hiroshi brings in terms of quality. But, uh, you know, there's no elephant print, just like the other threes uh, mm-hmm. that he had. Uh, yeah. I, I do wish, you know, and I think obviously that is the big what if, because it was supposed to, we've always, we've, as we've known for a while now, it was supposed to be Hiroshi versus Virgil doing their own, their, the 10, and they were going to, you know, go against each other. But um, yeah, we you know these are. I wonder what uh, if you know if, if they're going to bring out some fragment edition sneakers, you know, some more because obviously you know Hiroshi. What five years ago, five six years ago, he had he was doing a lot of different uh, collabs with Nike. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just it makes me think about conceptually what the ten 
is supposed to be. Right. Or like, like, what is it supposed to mean, you know? Because if you look at Virgil's 10, um, for the most part, it's – yeah, so that's the that was the three for that second. Yeah. Um, it was – it's those white-based ones with the quotations on the outside saying the technology or what the material is right. I mean, the – Chicago's are the only one that's kind of stand out to a past colorway, but the rest ones were sort of that white. And then you had mm-hmm. those other ones. But, like, looking at Fujiwara's and look at Virgil's, I mean, very different in in presentation, but similar in execution where it's simplified. There's a lot of Helvetica uh, sort of manufacturing type of thing on it. Like, what do you guys think this 10 was supposed to, like, be? Because there's they're so similar – um in at least the details maybe in you know because Virgil's is like a white his is like a dark whatever but, right like what do you think the 10 is because it's similar in execution with being so simple uh the more i look at them like those uh the prestos that he did and those cortezes like they seem to be more i don't know if he's looking for like a more practical look like like combining different like fly nets and and cortezes and acgs and like Prestos or whatever he's doing. Uh, I think that's maybe what he was going for was more of like a functionality thing and like a high end functionality thing over Virgil's kind of like aesthetic breakdown of the Nike. I don't know if he's like trying to propel the technology further. Maybe that's what he was trying to do. I have no clue. You know, what do you think, Al? Um, I feel like, uh, I, I feel like with, they, oh, fuck, they both did something a little different but they it's hard to explain because they both put their like their quote-unquote stamps on what they what they brought to the table at least with with fragment at least because a lot of people look at it as with fragment it's more just like oh it's just a fucking lightning bolt on some sneakers Mm -hmm. and that's it and then with Virgil it's like oh he just fucking put some quotation mark and just put it but to me it's like more than that and I you know I I, as a like I have uh I have Fragment uh, Roshi run, runs mm-hmm. uh, as well as uh, Fragment uh, Jordan ones. And I feel like they, I mean, both of the, the quality on, on both of those are amazing. And as well as having, like, having the off-white ones, like, I feel like they each did their own little thing on, on that, that collab, on their own, on their collab. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just so interesting, like how, uh, I guess basically, like, I'm trying to think about what the, the brief or the prompt was, because it's not like they pulled them right. both in and said, like, you have 10 shoes, go for it. Right. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'm, like I'm saying, they're very similar in execution, although they look very different. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a simplistic sort of, um, although you could argue that, like, argue that Virgil kind of went crazy, but still, the core of all his ideas are very simple. Right. And Fujiwara's is very similar, so I'm just trying to think, and I also was trying to speculate why uh, if maybe Virgil got the four and Fuji got the three. Mm-hmm. Well, originally, originally, uh, in, the, in the, sh- the press sheets or the sheets that was supposed to be speculating of what sneakers were coming out, Virgil supposedly was supposed to do an off-white three as well. So yeah. he was supposed to do the, the off-white one, and which he debuted at the Met Gala. Right. And then he was also supposed to do a Jordan three as part of the original ten, mm-hmm. but the the three never. It was either a rumor that that never happened, or it just, or it just it just either got scrapped. But yeah, the three was supposed to be part of the original ten. Okay. So, well, so, I was about uh, to say uh, it seems like to me, um, based on the ideas that they sort of ran with. Uh, mm-hmm. Virgil seemed to uh, cater to the technology. Well, actually, no, I don't even know if that's true. I was about to say, it feels like Virgil was trying to like really speak to the different parts of the shoe, while mm-hmm. Fuji was trying to let the whole shoe shine in the best way that he could do it possible. Mm-hmm. But then I'm still even kind of like, nah, you, I could switch that idea, and it kind of is so similar. Yeah, it, it so- kind of works. I, I feel like th- they're, maybe the prompt was like, hey, uh, here are some classic sil- – like maybe they gave them their own silhouettes each. Because, like, I don't know, did um, – no, like, because, yeah, Virgil got a Presto, too, and he put, put out a uh, – Fujiwara did a Presto as well. So I, I have no clue. I don't know what, like, what it could be. Maybe it was, like, hey – Wait, did, he, did Fujiwara do a Presto? Oh, he did? Yeah. Uh, these are the Prestos, right? No, he did a – no, he did Cortez. an Air Max. 
Uh, he did a Roshi. He did some Air Maxes. For for the ten for the sample. Um, let me see. What did he do? See, that's the other thing is that with all these shoes, like you can't tell just by looking at them what they are because they're mm -hmm. they're literally just a mishmash of two different shoes. Like there's the Cortez one. Here, let me just pull it up and screen share. Yeah, I remember he did the Roshi runs. He did yeah. the Cortez. Aren't yeah, these so the Prestos? No, those are like an Air Max one. Okay, those, so those are, are like Air the Air. Those are like the ACG esque uh, Air right. Max ones that he was doing. Yeah, and then yeah, the people went crazy for those. And the Cortez has really got me, really like. I really like these. These are very clean. Um, but yeah, I don't like. Yeah, maybe they just gave them different shoes to work with. And I, like, I don't know, but it's very interesting to think about. And uh, it, again, it's just. I mean, well, here's the real question. Now that we have enough shoes to sort of compare the two, and mm -hmm. let's not go crazy because Virgil's has so many more shoes than Fuji. I'll say that I like Fuji's idea more in execution better. Although I can't necessarily say what his idea was, but his execution of those is better to me. Do you guys have a preference of the either or? I mean, as mm -hmm. much as I shit on Virgil for his lack of ideas to me, I, he still is a great designer because the shoes that he makes are nice. But I still like Fuji's better. I don't think any of those shoes that I saw beat the Prestos that mm. Virgil put out. I think that's like the one thing. And even the Jordan 1s, like they're like the two, those two designs from the 10, I think just stomp on everything that Fuji did, honestly. You, even Fragment 1s? No, not the Fragment 1s. I'm talking about the 10 that I saw from, if we're talking about oh, overall collection. Oh, yeah, we're just talking about the ten, the idea of the 10 in general. Oh, well, those Fragment 1s are just so nice. Like, I think that, that those are those are my favorite shoe that he's ever done, you know? I, I no, we can't, to... take all those other ones out. We're just talking about the 10. Right. So, okay. I mean, well, what I mean, we saw, we've seen Air Max ones, we've seen sample threes. I mean, uh -huh. the, the Jordan threes were were pretty cool. Um, I think uh, it, it's 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 interesting because we saw. See, here's the thing: we saw Virgil's final work. Mm -hmm. We didn't see Hiroshi's final work. We just saw we saw samples. We've seen we're right. seeing samples. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's kind of like you. I mean, you. I don't know if I I could fully feel confident like comparing Virgil's final work to Hiroshi's samples or things that were that may not have been fully developed because right. you know obviously I mean if you go by samples I mean uh, Virgil wanted to do a fucking the OG uh part of the 10 he wanted a, a white Air Jordan 1 you know and that was that, that was supposed to be the, but you know obviously you know you go through things production things changes so I mean, I would like that you know you compare a sample. You got then compare what was in that, uh, what was in, in in fucking Chicago. The the samples that he had of like the fours, like compare those two. But I'm not gonna compare Virgil's final work to Hiroshi. I'm not gonna no, that's do that fair. That ma that's that makes sense. Um, even it, to me, even if you take all those samples from the, the Chica MCA, mm -hmm. I'm still rolling with Fuji. I think Fuji's aesthetically, uh, it's like more disciplined to me which i don't want to make it seem like that i'm gonna i'm shitting on virgil because right. i think i think he's just more open and creative and sort of free-flowing with how he approached this mm -hmm. fuji just seems like he has the discipline that as a designer i i want right like the cortez doesn't look crazy with the fly wire fly mm -hmm. whatever um mm -hmm. that acg looking air max looks clean like it's supposed to look like that right I think I just appreciate his attention to detail when incorporating new technologies in the old sneakers where, yeah. I mean, Vir Virgil's made it like literally took the shoe apart and sewed it back together to me. Right. But I think not, that's, you yeah. no, go, 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 go. I think that's what makes both of those designers so great is because that that's exactly like the, the, the styles that they come from. Like, you know, Virgil comes from an architectural background. So everything is about the infrastructure. Right. right. And Fuji's from the design world. So everything's about, like the discipline what like what goes into making a shoe so like he understands like in the same way like in comedy where there's guys who write and there's guys who do energy virgil would be an energy guy fuji would be like a writer you know yeah okay I, i'm not uh, mad at that comparison yeah i think that's like uh, that's what's like fun about the two designers because like if you look at if you look at the ones that fuji did versus the ones that virgil did it's like hey let's let's break this apart let's put it back together that's virgil and then uh, Fuji's is let's just do this at the best 
like let's just make the best possible version of See, it. That, that's that's what i'm that's what i was saying like you can get like i feel like if you want to compare you can compare the ones to the ones because those both went through final productions but like you're like you could compare the roshi to you know whatever you know mm-hmm. but like let's yeah but i'm not gonna say like i'm gonna look at i'm gonna judge what hiroshi did uh the samples for what they are samples and i, I yeah. think they were i think they were uh, you could tell the quality on those are exceptional just like quality on you know things that you know even the whole htm series with him uh tinker and, and mark parker like i mean quality you know it, it, it's it's simple design it's mm-hmm. taking an, an existing silhouette but it's also putting their flair on the whole uh process and 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 coming up with very quality materials so yeah yeah so here to kind of wrap this topic up i do i have one more question um because it did pop it in my mind uh when i was looking over fuji stuff so and we've talked about uh these two other guys before in great length but so when we look at the fear of god shoes Mm -hmm. and uh what travis has been allowed to do right um and based on what fujiwara was saying where he was like yeah, so I was presented the 10, and they sort of were like me and Virgil were fighting it out, Virgil won. Do you guys think that a similar prompt was given to Travis's team and Jerry's team? Because if you look at the releases and what they've done as of the past couple of years, it seems like they could have gotten a similar prompt with yeah. maybe they losing the title of the 10 to Virgil, but then still going forward with some shoes which is how you get like the fear of God ones and then his all flips. And then, cause Travis has also gotten similar silhouettes that these other guys have been working on. It's true. Um, I think with, I think comparing Travis and, and fucking Jerry Lorenzo are like two different things. Cause Jerry Lorenzo is a fucking fashion designer. So no, of course, and I'm not so saying compare those two guys like in their shoes, but I'm, what I'm saying is like, do you guys think that this 10 concept was given to a bunch of people in Virgil one? Or because it just seems like they were working on so many similar things. I feel like Virgil, Virgil was like the hot guy, which it, to this day, you know, I still understand, you know, not I don't understand, but I mean, Virgil was like hot and it's for, for Nike to give him these 10 shoes to like work on a collection of and you know, now he's at he's got to be at like 40 plus shoes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, you know, once again, it's almost like the right, right place, right time type of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he, he was getting hot and, and they were able to capitalize off of his hotness and, and go for, from there. And I think, you know, he was able to, yeah, he was able to, I mean, shit. I mean, it's still three, almost three years old and still, you know, still one of the hottest, you know, collabs ever with Nike's ever done. Yeah. Um, Luke, I, I mean, you, you, yeah, you go. Yeah, as far as like if they were given the same prompt, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Nike was not putting all of their eggs in the Fuji and Virgil basket. I'm pretty sure they probably sent it out to a bunch of designers, and then maybe a bunch of people sent their stuff back, and so maybe we, what we're getting now is the residual effect of the ten. But yeah, I think there was like a bunch of different people. Uh, I can't think of like Jerry. Yeah, Jerry was one. Probably Travis was probably one. I don't know who else would be in that. Like, you're not gonna give Sean ten shoes. I don't think. I don't think you're gonna give Witherspoon ten shoes. I don't know who right. else you would give ten shoes to. You yeah. know. So like, as far as but like with the see, because you could always make the argument with Travis too, where it's like he's just doing all the popular. Like he's doing all these popular shoes that everybody. Want. Which is a thought I had. I was like, yeah. wait, does this trickle down effect come? Because you have to remember internally there were, they're ahead of us. Right. So was this like uh, everyone in the office was getting hyped? They're like, Oh, give it a Travis. Cause Virg-. like, it's just fun to think about. Um, mm-hmm. That environment to me seems like probably closer to what uh, you're saying, Luke, uh, sort of a cross between what you both were saying, where it's kind of like Virgil won with, the timing and the presence and like his association to Kanye and other things like Nike, let's mm-hmm. capitalize on what we missed before with yay. It's mm-hmm. a couple of things, but I do kind of think that cause they were all released similar times. I feel like there was one probably 2015, 16. They're like, yo, let's just give some people some 10 shoes to do and see what we could do because we fucked the Kanye shit up and that really hurt us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, that was right around the time when he left. I don't, I don't remember the timetable. Like, now. It's Kanye. Kanye, Kanye left around what, uh, two thousand and fourteen ish. Yeah. So I, honestly, you, the timeline kind of matches up. You know, that's what I'm saying. I've been thinking about this a lot just because I have the time. But it's also like, I like to. I mean, I told you guys this as the designer. I like the story. I like to convince me why this is good instead of just me looking at it thinking it's hot. Like, tell me why. Mm-hmm. Um. I just like that story of like, let's capitalize on this. Let's grab his boy. Oh mm-hmm. shit, Fuji. We got Fuji. Let's grab him. Maybe he could do ten. Jerry's good. Let's grab ten. This young kid, Travis Scott, who's like a son of Kanye. Let's grab him. You know yeah. what I mean? It seems like they were. It was very calculated. And I can't think of anyone else other than those four at the moment. But it seems, yeah, like you said, the Don, timeline kind of matches. Don, Don C. Don C. Was in the mix. Don C. Don C yeah, C was he was in the mix. I think maybe he failed too early. I think he showed him the legacy, <laughs> and they were like. You'll just have this. That's it. <laughs> no, I think I've I've gone on record as saying I think the legacy was was Nike trying to uh, was trying to move a model that was trash, and then they right. said, Let's yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he said in it. multiple episodes. Yeah, I've said Mo- that. Yeah, I've, I've 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 always I've gone on record as saying that. I mean, for a guy Don C who was peddling four hundred dollar snapbacks and making people spend you know, four hundred, three hundred and fifty dollars on a pair of Jordans, which at the time to me was insane for a pair of Don C twos and and then even the second uh model, the second one, the tan ones, which were fucking seven hundred six hundred and fifty, seven hundred dollars. I don't think he was trying to put anything in Foot Locker, you know, for I think that was Nike just trying to right see that he can move shit. That's let's just point. throw let's throw his name on it. So for sure. Um yeah, I, I want to I wanna talk about something else that was very uh, interesting to me. Uh, yesterday, um, Le- a pair of LeBron 7s uh, retro, they came out uh, the media day. Ah, uh, yes. Sevens. Ooh. They, uh, and, uh, those were actually mi- mismatched, right? That's mm-hmm. correct. Yeah, okay, okay. They We first saw them on LeBron James' uh, feet at uh, Lakers uh, media day or back in around September. Uh, it was a you know beautiful pair of sneakers, and um, and obviously they sold out yesterday. They they did not sit and they moved pretty fast. Right. And um, I just I wonder like you know are we are we seeing a LeBron hype or is it just goddamn that was a beautifully done shoe? I think it's more Kobe hype than anything, honestly. Yeah, what I was gonna say is it's probably a mix of things. It's a mix of uh, not only Lakers love, but uh LeBron love and Kobe love um, it has to be those three things um yeah it is the is the triforce of perfection right there for like selling a sneaker at this exact moment you know mm. I think it just like the all three of those things lined up as unfortunate as it is they lined up perfectly and those shoes mm. were gonna fly off the shelf no matter what I think any Laker colorway for the next couple years honestly um as long as we are dealing with COVID. I feel like that timeline is going to be similar to where Lakers colorways is just going to fly off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems like that kind of match up. Well, now that we're like a couple weeks into quarantine, once we get out, what do you think fashion is good? Like, what do you think streetwear is going to look like? Is is everybody going to go back to baggy shit? Because we're just so tired of all the tight stuff. We're just used to pajamas. You see, people already are. Uh, you see it with from a, a standpoint of jeans and 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 bottoms that people are very like they're trying to wear the baggier shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I mean, obviously, you know, fashion always you know comes around. Definitely goes back a uh, full circle. But um, I don't know if I'm truly into the baggy shit. I don't. I actually. Yeah. It's my time again. I think yeah. This is the the year of the white trash. <laughs> it is me my double x hoodies will be fashionable once again I, you know like the more i think about it it's like listen jordan's making a comeback there's like a 90s vibe to everything look it's- no 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 we're not letting jordan take over here look i the the jordan fashion everyone's over analyzing jordan's shitty fucking uh taste from the 90s it's because okay? yeah you can't say anything to that man Look, he can wear whatever he wanted because he was fucking Michael Jordan. We all know he looked terrible. If there's any one person that tries to argue that he was a fashionable guy, I'll fight you. And I'll die on the this beret. Day. The beret is the worst. Look, what are you talking about? The beret is the best part. 
He went. He went to France, so he wore a beret. It just makes sense, dude. Lawrence, do you can you back me up? I mean, granted, I was never the biggest uh, Michael Jordan uh, fashion fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never. I'm. I've never. You know. I mean, Mike was like one of the first motherfuckers that was wearing hoop earrings that I can remember. That yeah. people were like, all right, you know, because a lot of times, you know, the uh, the idea or the connotation behind if you wore a hoop earring, you were yes. you were gay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Mike was the first nigga that was like, fuck it, I'm rocking this hoop earring and I'm about to drop fifty on you easily. So that that I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him props for. I've never been a fan of the 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 Michael Jordan jeans or his style, but I mean, look as a guy who wore who wears the same size clothing as he did then, right? He's bad at it. Right. He has no taste. Nah, man. Nothing the hangs guy, off the of guy my... brought, Did you not just hear Lawrence? The guy brought hoop earrings to the straight male community. The guy had, oh. to, he had to drop 50 on, on the fucking Lakers. Look, on the Knicks, I, wa- to fucking I wasn't... Make it valid, valid to I, wasn't, I wasn't paying attention back then to what's right. going on. But similarly to what Lawrence said, I guarantee there were a bunch of dudes going like, <laughs> if he drops 50, this is okay. Right. He pr- he did it for the for for the streetwear community. Why are you not gonna give this man props? No. <laughs> no, I mean, well, listen. I mean, yeah, no, he's not. On. Obviously, obviously, uh, he's not ever gonna be looked at as you know a Russell Westbrook or Dwayne Wade or even or LeBron James or dressing. Um, you know, obviously, some of the 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 outfits that he wears or you know <laughs> a lot of the outfits he wears are, are not the the most stylish or even, you know, something that I would be caught dead in. But I think <laughs> if that's MJ style, I mean, that that's his style. But, you know, I mean, uh, shit. I mean, he's, he's a fucking go. I mean, God damn. Let's do that <laughs> cool. Like, shit, yo. I mean, I just, I mean. Look, it's the same, it's the same reason why Tom Brady got, aware, got away with wearing Uggs, okay? And mouth kissing his son. He's that good. Yeah, when you're that good at stuff, you can just do whatever you want. So people trying to analyze his clothing and shit annoys the shit out of me because it's like, no, we everyone thought he dressed like Trey. Also, I don't think a stylist was necessarily a job for uh, NBA players to have back then. Like, now I feel like every major – if you make over $2 million in your contract, you probably have a stylist, right? Probably, so yeah. I think back then they didn't really have that as a position for these athletes to utilize. Like, I don't, I don't yeah, think no, MJ but- had a stylist. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't really talk for the times because I was a child. But um, yeah, I, I don't think the NBA had that much of a, a fashion impra- impact. At yeah, the time. when he first wore the beret, you were like negative three. I was negative three. I was negative three years <laughs> old. That's what happened. And before, like, I was while I was being conceived in the mind, I was like, "That's a nice beret. I'm gonna start wearing berets." <laughs> Yo, if anyway, if I see any dude wearing a beret, I'm gonna trash him, especially if I know. Actually, I, I'm only if I know you. <laughs> if I find a if I find a baby picture with me wearing a beret, I don't think I have one. But if I do, I'm putting it on the Instagram for sure. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, oh, I'm excited to watch these next couple episodes, man. I know. Uh, let me show. Uh, let's see. We had. Are you we, guys? What's up? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, did you guys want to talk about the Alexander McQueens? Yeah, let's hit this. Out. Let's hit this real quick, Luke. Uh, yeah. and then we'll talk about Wilson taking over the basketball. How's that? Yeah, and, that's and, true. And, and and we didn't talk about the Brazil dunk, so we got to get in that too. That's true. Oh, where do you want to start? You want to start with the Brazils? Yeah, let's start with Brazil oh. dunks, just because like that that is very topical and it has a lot of traction on it. Um, mm-hmm. and I mean, going, I think going back to what I said before, like love dunks. Not a low guy though. Uh, everyone have best of luck with that. But great looking shoe, great colorway. Yeah, uh, very clean. Love them. Uh, will I be able to get a pair? Probably not. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's gonna be uh, this week is gonna be interesting for a lot of people. You want them, huh? No, I don't. I don't. I don't want them at all. I, I'm more of a, <laughs> I'm more of a white and then like a, a basic colorway, like for like regular dunks, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. I go. But uh, Brazils don't do it for me. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my own verge wire 
if I get a pair. Get, put, my own, <laughs> put my own verge wire on it. And then Just I'll have, ruin, ruin some shoes. <laughs> yeah, I'll, put, I'll get a hole puncher make my own holes and just start putting an extra pair of laces on top. Mm -hmm. Do you think the dunk that um, Virgil's working on next is going to have some crazy, uh, like, new – you know what it is? Okay, here, going back, and then we'll stop. It seems like Virgil – because I'm just talking – this is stream of consciousness. It seems like Virgil is trying to recreate and make his own tech out of Nike tech, right? Because we joked about the Verge wire being, like, the fly wire Virgil thing, mm -hmm. right? Do you think he's going to try to keep doing that with the technology? Because he's doing another dunk. He said that in an interview. He's doing another one. Do you think he's going to keep trying to do this shit where, like, holes are a thing, new wires are a thing? Like, what do you think is going to go on next? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe a little. Uh, he, did, he did holes. He did uh, wires. He did... Uh, I don't know what else he could do. Maybe little fans. He'd get a little spinning action like those uh, spree wells. The holes are his version of Nike Air, right? Because right. he kind of said that. He's like, it's the same air. Mm -hmm. um, that wire is sort of like his version of fly wire, right? right? It's, you know, I might have to do a little more research and get back to this, but it seems like that's kind of what he was doing. It was yeah. making his own version of each technology. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything else he could, like, I don't know what else he's going to do with these shoes. All I know is uh, that it's, there's something's going to come, he's going to do something new. He's trying to figure out something that'll probably last in the brand forever. I think mm -hmm. that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. He's trying to figure out something that'll leave a legacy uh, because I don't think anybody's going to really touch the models that he's, I, I can't see anybody touching the models that he's already done. Uh, no, dude, everyone's going to touch them. What are you talking you about? You think so? You think everybody yeah. we're going to get like a different colored Presto every year in 2025? I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is Nike was like, hey, Luke, do you want to do a Presto? You're not going to go, nah, Virgil did that. No, not like, not a Presto, but like an off, you know what I mean? Like, we're not going to get different colorways on the off-white Prestos when he's done. Oh, no, yeah, they'll leave that, that'll be... For... That's what I'm saying. I don't oh, think we're going to see anything like that. Like, I don't think we're going to see specifically no those models being reused that he yeah. uh, that he designed but maybe something's going to stick around maybe the holes will stick around maybe the verge wire will, will stick around but i think he's trying to figure out something that'll cement him in nike history uh furthermore you know okay oh, yeah i think he's already cemented i mean i know what you're saying but like yeah. furthermore i mean i don't know yeah who knows mm -hmm. what color what color verge wire should i put on these brazils if i get them <laughs> probably yellow yellow Maybe. um but speaking <laughs> speaking of sort of uh like reinventing technologies and shoes and stuff going back to this mcqueen conversation that we were going to have real quick um mm -hmm. uh and this will go to a story that you know about me and lawrence we were outside a comedy club i'm not going to really like name any names or whatever but there was this female comedian we were talking to she knows that me and lawrence are sneakerheads she was like hey look at my new shoes i got and they're, they're the alexander mcqueen's that look a lot like the stan smith Mm -hmm. And I said, I was like, oh, tight. Those are dope. Um, you could have got a Stan Smith, saved you some money. It's still the same flex. And then uh, I think, Lawrence, you defended her while she proceeded to berate me. <laughs> yeah, I did. You were like, I did yeah, just it. let her wear her shit. Yeah. <laughs> let her mm -hmm. do her thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is very valid. She should. She'd be able to wear wherever one. But mm -hmm. here's the quick discussion that we could have. Um, to me, it's an unnecessary flex on her end because I'd rather wear Stan Smith. Now I, I'm not, I can't speak for everybody and I'm not saying one shoe is better than the other, but I would like a girl wearing a Stan Smith versus no McQueens. Right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have an opinion on that, but what I saw that's coming out recently is there's a sort of 270 looking version of that um, McQueen Stan Smith looking thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I saw, if I saw a woman wearing these, I mean, they're probably Asian, honestly, and, uh, mm. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta be honest with you. Like my track record doesn't lie. When, when it comes to girls wearing like super over the top designer shoes, I'm usually into them. Like, I just don't know. I don't know why it's usually because they have money and I'm poor. I think that's usually what it comes down to looking for a sugar mama. And I would are... rather just have a girl wear like regular 270s or regular Smiths. I, it seems like this is trying too hard for me. Hmm. I don't know. They're kind of nice. 
to me, I mean, we like fucking shit on Steve Madden for days when they try to do those like Travis Knotts, those mm-hmm. like off white looking things. To right. me, this mm-hmm. is just the Alexander McQueen version of that. Like they already had that Stan Smith looking thing. Now they mm-hmm. added an air bubble on the bottom. And they're doing a great job combining both Nike and Adidas aesthetics. But I'm also like, why don't you just get the regular shit? This is clearly a knockoff. Like, yeah, it's a more expensive official knockoff. Is it comfortable, though? I'm sure it's very comfortable. I don't know. If it's comfortable, people should be able to rock. I'm I'm standing alone in this. Get the sneaker, not the fucking high-end shoe. Uh, If you got the money to flex, flex. Right, L? Yeah, why not? All right. That's just me. It's just (laughs) you out here. Just for, which is why, you know what? Everybody go out and buy a pair of Ben and Jerry's. If you can afford it right now, just spend the $1,800 on them. You heard it here mm-hmm. first, guys. Spend all of your your stimulus and then some on, on these Ben and Jerry's. That's a Luke Tavisi promise. There you go. And now uh, with a great um, ending topic to go into watching the doc in like 45 minutes, uh, Wilson has just replaced Spalding as the official basketball of the nba um so it's like a 30 plus year run yeah uh being shot down by wilson um to me wilson is a tennis racket company that's how i was introduced to them i know them by tennis balls and i know Mm -hmm. them by tennis rackets um i don't know what your guys experience with it is but this is going to be weird because the last time they tried to change the ball it didn't work out very well and i know that was a spalding product but still they tried to change it This is going to be a completely different uh, universal tool that all the players are going to touch. Um, I personally like Spalding better as a brand. I feel like their products are a little better to me. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you – do you guys have an opinion on this? Does this this shock you as much as it shocked me? Uh, Yeah, actually, it's actually very surprising to hear that they're ending their partnership with Spalding. I I never really saw that coming. I don't really see a need to change balls, to be honest. I mean – there must have been some sort of backdoor, like behind the scenes yeah, drama money. or something. Yeah, of course it's money, but mm-hmm. there's got to be like I don't know, uh, I don't know how it'll affect the game. Uh, I've played with Wilson balls, I've played with Spalding balls before, and it's pretty much the same uh, for me. But also, I'm trash, so nothing's really gonna <laughs> edge out my game much better. Al, you play ball. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I play, I play with Spalding. I play with Wilson balls. I mean, I, I've never played – I don't think I've played with an official game ball, mm-hmm. uh, Spalding. And I, I, and from what I've heard, it isn't, the, it isn't the nicest basketball to play with, if that makes sense. It's not like the – it's not like what you think it is. It's right. like a different type of basketball. And um, it's like harder from what I heard. It's, uh, but, you know, I mean, like you said, money talks. And, and like much things – like I remember when the NBA used to be on NBC – and then they switched over to ESPN and ABC, and it felt like, what the fuck? And this is probably going to feel like that. It's going to take some getting used to for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's going to be similar to when, uh, like, Reebok lost the NFL. Um, Nike had a bunch Maybe. of problems. Or no, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, even, like, the New Jerseys in the NBA, Nike, like, kind of fucked up making them for a second, and it took a minute. I feel like this is going to be a, have a backlash. The last time they tried to change the ball – I think it was 2005 or six or something. Remember they tried to have less seams on the ball. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. And, and it was not met. It was met with resistance. So yeah, much resistance. The, the players were saying it was cutting their fingers some wild shit like that. Um, I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, that was a huge yawn. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Um, yeah, just stuff like that to me, because uh, I've been in not that capacity of deals, but like, you know, I've spread around st- stuff like we have to change this whole thing. And then it's like, well, we have to do what? The rug, yeah. like mm-hmm. the, it's such a major, the amount of skews, pr- things that they have to change now. Yeah. It's, I just saw that and I was like, wow, damn, Spalding is hurting. Yeah. Yeah. So. You'd be Logan. surprised how much being the official ball of whatever, a tool of whatever, uh, actually helps, and that's 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 fucking huge. Yeah, they they just lost out on hundreds of millions, probably. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 
rest in peace, Spalding. Yeah, th- does that mean they're done? Does that like no, no, no. not by any means. No, they'll okay. be fine though. Um, the same way Wilson was alive and the prioritized other sports, I'm sure mm-hmm. Spalding will do the same. Yeah. It'd be funny if they exactly swapped. Well. And they started doing – Spalding started doing tennis balls? It's just anything that Spalding did, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, I, well, dude, if you guys I'm excited got... for this doc. I really can't yeah. wait to watch yeah, no. these last two episodes. We got, we got 40 minutes, guys, and then we'll get the last two. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is a great episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was fun. And if you guys got anything else, um, like any final thoughts? Nah. I got nothing else. Everybody stay safe, stay inside. That's all. That's it. Um, yeah, you keep your mask on, six feet. Michael Jordan, last dance. There you uh, go. You can follow us at Not That Cheney, at LZD325, at Trevisus, at Sub Podcast NYC. Uh, if you go to the Instagram, we got an email and we have a number you can text, call, leave us a voicemail. Um, we got the Discord. Join that. Um, we're going to figure out some sort of virtual show, some sold-out Tuesday show, just because uh, we want to keep you guys around and active with us. And we also got jokes that we need to work on, too. So There you go. Yeah, we, yeah, we got it. Um, and I guess yeah. that's it. All right. Yes, sir. All right. So we'll see you guys next week, and we'll see you in the Discord, too. Peace. Peace. Peace, guys. <laughs>